Good afternoon. So, as a poet, I am completely obsessed with stories. And I absolutely believe that stories have the power to change both the individual and the wider society around us. For I've heard it said that the best way to destroy a people is to take away their stories, to make them forget, get lost in the smallness of their own predicament like a child who cannot find his way home walks the streets counting cracks in the pavement, one step hop, two step jump, scrape of boot, hoping someone will take notice, but his storybooks have fallen from his bag and now... Our storybooks have fallen from our bags. We have forgotten who it is that we are. It was Milan Kundera who said, the first step in liquidating a people is to erase their memory, to destroy their books, to destroy their history. And we have seen this time and again throughout our history. I have stood in that square in Berlin where the books were burnt, and I have knelt on the ground there and read the inscription in the concrete, the burning of books is only the prelude. In the end, where the books are burnt, in the end, they will burn the people. You see, to take away a people's, a person's story is to take away their very soul, the very thing that makes them unique, who it is that they are, to take away their stories is to dehumanize them and so to destroy them. Yet here's the thing. If the first step in destroying a people is to take away their stories, then the first step in the restoration of a people is the restoring of their stories, the remembering and reclaiming of who it is that they are. As a poet, this is what I do. I have traveled the world over telling my own stories and running workshops, creating spaces for others to do the same, to remember, to reflect, to reclaim who they are. I have seen old men break down in tears at the recollection of that long lost part of themselves. I have seen teenagers stand up in classrooms declaring who they are to their classmates, to those who had previously been, bullied, been bullying them, saying, this is who I am, this is my story, and I will not be your victim any longer. This is the power of story, this remembering, this reclaiming who it is that we are. But the power of story doesn't stop there. For... In the process of poetry, as I write and as I share my poetry, I'm not only remembering and reflecting on who I am, but in the very process of storytelling, I am actually directly shaping who I am in that moment. I am seeing my life in a certain way. Let me phrase it to you like this. Who you are is not shaped by the things that have happened to you in your life. Rather, who you are is shaped by the stories that you tell about those things that have happened to you in your life. The names that you give those experiences. The lenses by which you view them. This is what truly shapes who you are. So if we have an event right here, and the event is that a mouse runs in, runs down here, and this handsome young gentleman at the front here jumps up, into his chair, up onto his chair, squealing like a frightened mouse, then we would all think that it was the mouse who caused, that caused such a reaction. But it wasn't the poor defenseless mouse at all. Rather, it was the stories that he tells about mice the things that he believes about them. This is what caused 
such a consequence. Not that you would do that, sir. I'm sure you're really brave. Um, This is what would cause such a consequence. And it's the same with the larger realities in our life. All of us have had good and bad experiences that have happened to us. And we tell stories about those experiences to others, and perhaps more importantly, to ourselves. And these stories that we tell, they become our reality. They become the way we see the world. They become the very fabric of who we are. Our stories become us, which begs the question, what are the stories that you tell about yourself, both to others and to yourself, both generous stories and poverty stories, stories too harsh? What are the stories that you tell about yourself and how have they shaped your way of being in this world? And what are the stories that as a wider society we tell and how have they shaped who we are in this world? For here's the thing. If who I am, if who we are is not shaped by the events of our lives but by the stories that we tell about them, then herein lies the power of story. When we begin to change the stories that we tell about ourselves, we begin to change who we are. When we look at our lives through a new set of lenses, when we give new names to those experiences, we begin to change who we are. From the very same event will come someone who tells the story of being a victim. And this victim is then who they become for the rest of their life. Yet out of the very same experience will come another person and this person tells the story of being a courageous survivor who can take on anything this world throws at them and this becomes their identity for the rest of their life. I have a friend named Carrie who's about to release a book called Flying on Broken Wings. And this friend of mine, she has a tragic story of being sold as a child into sex slavery by her dad in Canada and the atrocities that happened there and then her eventual escape and seeking asylum here in Australia and finding freedom here. And she's about to release this story, her life story. But here's the thing, within the pages of this book and within the life story of my friend, she does not portray herself as the tragic victim. Rather, she is that courageous survivor who says in the most darkest of situations, in all that has happened to us, the the worst things that can happen, we can choose to fly on broken wings. We can choose stories that will be better than the ones that have been scripted for us. You see, our stories will either imprison us or they may set us free. And isn't it time that we started telling better stories? Isn't it time we started telling more spacious stories, more generous stories, kinder stories about who we are and who we are as a culture? Isn't it time we changed some of the stories that we tell? And who knows what change this will bring. This is the power of story. This remembering, this reclaiming, this declaring who we are, but also this reframing, this ability to restory ourselves, to look at our lives through a new set of lenses, to tell those better stories and bigger stories and begin to live out of those stories. Poetry. John O'Donohue, an amazing writer, says, is a fascinating conversation with your unknown self. Isn't it time we started telling better stories? Let me finish this talk with some poetry. I want to share, I'm going to take this off, poetry is an extreme sport, I tell you what. I'll just hang it there. Uh, The poem that I want to finish with is about 
breaking free from those stories that other people squash us into, from those names that other people put upon us that bring us into a box that hold us captive, and choosing to live out of bigger, better, larger, more spacious stories. It's a poem called Ugly Words, and it's also a poem about elephants. The word should is an ugly word, and so is the word moist, and pus, and also festering, and repugnant, for that matter, so is discharge. So really, there is nothing more disgusting than a moist, festering, repugnant discharge of pus. You can taste that at the back of your throat, it's nice, isn't it? Except for the word should. Should is uglier than all of these. I should be more like him. I should look more like her. I should do this. I should do that. I should have gotten over this by now. Should is a chain gang word, a ball and chain word, a shackle around the ankle. In the circus, when an elephant is young, it is pinned to the ground by a small wooden peg. It is held there, chain around its leg, it pulls but cannot break free, so it grows as a slave tied down. It walks around, it walks around in circles. When this elephant is old, it is held in the same way. One small wooden peg, one chain around the leg is all that is needed to hold down a 10 foot tall, 5,000 kilogram mountain of an animal that could tear a whole tree from its roots. Yet it walks around, it walks around. A toothpick in the ground is the worst kind of slave master. It is a lie, a pretense, and this is what makes it all the more sinister. We believe the string around our ankles to be made of unbreakable silver, but pull a little tighter and you will see. Yet the adult elephant does not even bother, and most of the time, nor do I, I walk around, I walk around, tied to the ground, should is an ugly word. So is damaged. So is victim. So is hopeless. So is worthless. So is never good enough, never this enough, never that enough. So is broken beyond repair. They are ugly words, stuck at the back of your throat words. They are toothpick words, hammered into the ground to keep you captive. For we all have our circus masters. And this Well, this is not an animal rights poem, but perhaps it should be. It's time to let the elephants free. I'm talking stampede. I'm talking rumble in the jungle. I'm talking Dumbo ears. Tell me you still have those ears big enough to fly away. Tell me that elephant legs can still break bones when they need to. Tell me they can find freedom in their stomp, swinging trunks to a new sound. No more circus music and balancing on balls too small for who you truly are. Find the open fields, find the elephant paths, learn to live again, no longer tied to the ground by their ugly words, cast off their ugly words, throw down their ugly words, use a toothpick for its proper purpose, to clean those circus masters from your teeth, no longer held captive. There is no doubt in my mind why a group of elephants are called a parade. You walk high, you chin high, you trunk high. Tell the world you are free from its constriction, that no one can touch you, that should is an ugly word that you will never wear ever again. Thank you.